What if there was a way to prevent malware and ransomware attacks, mitigate zero-day exploits, and reduce the risk of a data breach, all while using the tools that you already have? In this video, we'll explain how that's possible using the principle of least privilege. What is it, and how can you implement it? Keep watching to find out. I'm Blake with Ian Computers. As a managed IT service provider, we help small and mid-sized businesses to strengthen their cybersecurity and protect against the latest threats. Our clients deal with threats like ransomware and phishing on a daily basis. So we use a number of tools and techniques to protect their networks and keep their data protected. One of those techniques is called the principle of least privilege. When implemented correctly, least privilege can protect your network from malware and ransomware threats, from the risk of data breaches and leaks, and from hackers and intruders. But it's not without its challenges, especially when you're first getting started with it. In this video, you'll find out what least privilege is and what it looks like. We'll look at some of the issues you're likely to face, and we'll examine a really nice tool that we use to help us implement least privilege for our clients in a user-friendly way. Let's get started. To explain the principle of least privilege, let's hear from Thomas, our director of technology. The principle of least privilege is where we're only giving people access to what they need access to. So you're not gonna have access to everything. You're gonna have access to, you know, what, what you as an individual need, nothing else. When you're thinking of least privilege, think about a large apartment building. You may have a key that opens the front door, the door to your own apartment, and maybe some common areas like the laundry room. But your key doesn't work on your neighbor's apartment, and theirs doesn't work on yours. It makes sense, right? Now, there are some other advantages to implementing least privilege that Thomas also will tell us about. Ideally, in an ideal world, we'd set up groups of users and everybody in a particular group would have access to certain things or certain systems. And that's really where we wanna go with, with people that we're working with, is having it set up in a way that's really easy to manage. And that does a couple of things. So it's providing security first and foremost, but it also simplifies things like, so we're setting up a new user, uh, we know exactly what to give them access to. So it's, it's about control and, and process and security. So we can see that least privilege offers some significant advantages, both for security and for day-to-day -day operations. But it's not always the easiest thing to implement, especially if your organization isn't used to working that way. So that brings us to our next section, the challenges of implementing least privilege. As the saying goes, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. There are several issues that can crop up when you're implementing least privilege for the first time. Thomas explains some of them here. Because as soon as you start implementing least privilege, uh, there's a lot of people that are gonna be upset and they're gonna say, hey, why can't I do this anymore? Well, it's because you weren't supposed to be doing that in the first place. And so it's an education process for the team, for the organization uh, to, to get security in place. There are also some important technical challenges that come along with implementing least privilege, especially when you're removing local admin rights from users on workstations. First, some software still requires admin rights to run, especially legacy applications. We see this with line of business software, industrial control software, and other apps that were developed prior to the introduction of user account control in Windows Vista. Many of these programs assume that a user is a local admin and they either refuse to run or they don't work as intended unless run with admin rights. Or Windows 10 might detect that some software needs local admin rights and then prompts the user for elevation whenever the program's launched. Another similar problem is that many programs want to update on the fly and they'll either nag the user or refuse to run until they're updated. Now, it can seem like there's no perfect solution for these kinds of issues and this can cause frustration for you and your users. Here's Thomas again to explain some of the issues he's seen when making these kinds of security changes. You know, the challenge with security is that uh, we, we all want security. We all want the benefits of security, but nobody wants to, to follow the, the rules that security requires. So uh, if we're going to have a secure organization, we're going to have to have parameters. And it, it may mean that you have to go ask your manager for permission to do something or ask him to do something for you. In the long run, it's going to keep us more secure. In the short run, for organizations that aren't doing it, it's going to cause some pain and some frustration. And I've seen in organizations where you lose some employees over. If you're looking at the big picture, in the long run, it will pay off. But is there a better way to implement least privilege, especially removing admin rights, without frustrating your users or overwhelming your technical team? In the next section, we'll talk about one solution that we've found to help with this. Here at Ian Computers, we service clients with a wide range of needs, different software, 
different types of users, but we also have a responsibility to keep our clients secure by using best practices such as least privilege. Fortunately, we discovered a tool that helps us to do just that. One of the ways that we at Egan Computers have found a way to help mitigate some of that is through a tool called Auto Elevate, and it's a privileged access management solution. Auto Elevate simplifies both the implementation of least privilege and the ongoing day-to-day -day tasks that it involves. It works to help your users do what they need to do, like installing software or updating line of business apps without compromising security. You know, for instance, in the wild, wild west, if you will, everybody can install software and do things that require privilege on a computer. Maybe there's local accounts. Definitely not best practice in the IT industry, not something we want to do at the enterprise level. And so one of the ways we, we fix that is through this little tool called Auto Elevate. And it gives the user the ability to, to do a little bit. So they could say, attempt to install a software on their computer, and it will send an alert to the IT manager on their smartphone. And it will say, hey, do you want to approve this installation of Office 365 for Bobby? And you say, yes, I want to approve that, or no, I I don't want to approve that. It's an app that's running on the computer and it monitors things like, is the antivirus up to date on the computer? Is uh, all the patching up to date on the computer? And when the IT manager receives that message notification on, on the app on his smartphone to approve or not approve, it's gonna call out if, if things are not secure, if things are not ready for the computer, and then he can just deny it. And then the user gets a little pop-up that says, hey, this has been denied by the systems administrator. Uh, you know, reach out to him if you have more questions. So it's a great little tool. It keeps the control at the IT level but it gives the user the ability to do a little bit. So whether you're a one-person IT department or you have a whole team, you know how valuable and limited your time can be. And that's where Auto Elevate really shines, helping you and your team to make your users happy and keep your network secure, all while saving you time. Another reason for using Auto Elevate is IT staff is often stretched thin. We're very busy and with security threats today, it is more and more difficult to, to find the bandwidth and capacity uh, from an IT department organization to do everything we need to do. But if I can put a little bit of that off on the end user in a secure way where they're able to manage a little bit of that with my control and my permission, really saving the, the company money and helping us to invest in strategy and systems that are, that are really going to make us successful. So in this video, we've talked about what is least privilege, why is it so important in cybersecurity, and what are the challenges with implementing least privilege. We also examined how a privilege management tool like Auto Elevate can help to keep your network secure through least privilege. Now, least privilege is a critical cybersecurity tool, yet you may have struggled with implementing it for one reason or another. So if you'd like help implementing least privilege, reach out to us for a free demo of Auto Elevate. We'd love to show you how its powerful security features will work with your software and your users in your environment. You don't need to use us for managed services to take advantage of Auto Elevate either. We have both managed and unmanaged Auto Elevate plans that can help you keep your network secure. So check out the link below to request more information or to schedule a demo.